everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So this is the start of a new series which is going to be focusing on stamping and colouring and embossing, just using lots of different kind of, I guess, materials with our card making. So it's going to be cards for the next one to two weeks. They will be fun fold cards still, but they will be focusing on using our stamps with them. I've got so many stamps and I love colouring and it's, again, I always say it's, it's, it's something I tend to do really off camera but I thought I'd incorporate it a bit more and have a focus. So I'm going to use alcohol markers, I'll be using my watercolour pens, um, I'll be using the, what inks I, you know, go with them, so hopefully you'll pick up loads of tips along the way. So the first card that I've done is this really cute little kind of, well it's meant to be like a vegetable patch, which you can obviously hopefully tell. It's all kind of deconstructed, so it's that crate style pop-up box that I've done many times, and I'll share all the other pop-up boxes up here because they're all different, all different sizes, so you can kind of really mix them all together and you know put your own together. But it's used in this Hunky Dory mixed vegetables stamp set. Um, I brought a load of the Hunky Dory stamps, uh, oh gosh, probably about a month ago now, but I will share links to everything below because I know that they will still be available. And I've made this one with them. So it folds flat and it fits into a 6x6 envelope so I've just decorated the front there Love Grows here and that was using a free stamp set from a magazine which I'll show you in a moment but the reason I love these so much is they're great for showing off those stamps that you have that are a theme you know so this one is all themed around fruit and veg well yeah there is fruit fruit and vegetables and it's nice to have this kind of pop-up box effect for those I've done some bunting, I've got some blending there on the background and I'm going to show you all of that. Rather than have it all ready, I will show you how I do it and that's going to be the difference with these videos. A lot of the time I have everything ready to go and I just say stamp this many or colour this in but I'm actually going to show you that kind of stuff. So I had gone and done the envelopes and whenever you're using, this is using alcohol markers, whenever you want to pattern or do something on the front of your envelope just get a piece of cardstock so I've got a thick piece of kind of just the back of one of my paper pads and pop that inside your envelope and then stamp and colour and that way because alcohol markers are obviously prone to bleeding through and get this in there we go by popping that in there it will not bleed through to the other side of your envelope and you'll just get a really nice finish okay Really, envelopes aren't alcohol marker friendly, so you don't want to really douse them too much and layer them too much. So I just went quite lightly over that, but I've got a nice little kind of feature there just to mix in. So that's the envelope ready for this one here. Okay, so this is the stamp set. So it's for the love of stamps and it's the mixed vegetables and here it is. And it's just so cute. I'm gonna go through and do all the little signs with you. And I have all my pieces here, but I do have a little video of me coloring them. And I will just show you the colors that I used. I've also got the bunting ready. So these are all the pieces. Now I do fussy cut, I love to fussy cut. Again, if you have a scanner cut, then you will be able to stamp them and then get your machine to cut them for you and then you can colour them in. But this one here I love to use, but when I fussy cut these are my new favourites. So these are the tonic snips and they are really really good and they're comfortable and the reason I like these over all my other ones is they have these pieces here where you can rest. So I use like that and you, you'd be surprised actually, you do end up resting that finger there and it's just really comfortable to cut them. So yeah if you are looking for some nice snips then these ones I definitely recommend. I have many so I think I'm able to give a good and fair kind of comparison and a good review and these are very very good. So that's the ones that I use to cut these out and then what I'll do now is I'll just add in the video of me colouring them all and then I'll show you the colours that I used.
So for those images there, I used my Arteza Everblend pens, markers. These are them here. I'm really enjoying them. I've used them so much now and they work really well for me. A good price point, so, and you get a lot of colours, depending on what ones you go for, but they're really nice. So these are all the colours and I will list the colours in my blog. So those of you that do have these, because I know some of you do, and again, I know some of you will already have this because I shared it on my Facebook page when I got the bargains, but I will share those colours there. And um, yeah, this is what you get. So they're really, really fun to do. I hope you like that quick little video. We've done doubles of the tomatoes and the carrots carrots and the radishes. Everything else I just done one of. And then for the bunting, I use this here, which is an old stamping up little bunting punch. But if you just cut three quarters of an inch by five eighths of an inch and just do a little flag tail cut and you'll have these pieces here. Okay, again, all those measurements will be in my blog. So for anybody that's seen my other boxed pop-up box cards. I like to deconstruct a lot of them, especially when I do the crates. So you are going to need a piece here of three by six, and this is the back piece, the back panel, that's all separate. Then you will want a piece that's two and three quarters by five and three quarters, and that will go on top. And it's that smaller piece that you're gonna need now for blending. So I'm just bringing in my Distress Oxides here. So I've got the Mermaid Lagoon and the Mustard Seed. And what you want to do is do the sunshine first. So I'm just bringing in, I've got my makeup brush here, which I know many of you have. These are brilliant for, for blending. You always get a perfect blend. And all you're going to do for the sunshine is just come in from that either corner and just kind of fade it out. Like, don't push down so heavy as you kind of get like that. And then if you want to just do a bit more Bit more intense yellow on the very corner there you can okay so that's all I'm doing for the Sun so I'm just gonna pop that to one side and then I'm gonna bring in the mermaid lagoon and this time I'm gonna start from the bottom up and again and you just want to get that kind of real light blue when it kind of starts to meet the Sun I'm not gonna add any more ink unless I just do it right from the bottom. Although you're not gonna see much of this bottom. So if you wanna have more of an intense blue, then just focus on the sides. But again, you don't really wanna hit the yellow because you don't want it to turn green. So again, I'm just gonna come up the side here. And this does get covered by my bunting. Now, if you do need to touch it, I always put a piece of cardstock down there just so that you don't get any fingerprints. And again, I'm not going to add any more ink now. I'm just going to very carefully come up to that sunshine without really touching it. Now, I am using a textured card here. It was a piece of scrap and I didn't realise it had this texture in so much, but it's fine. It all adds to it. So yeah, just you just you it's nice to have that kind of halo, that glow around the sun. And by having that little bit of white, it will give you that look. If you don't want it then go closer okay okay so there is my background so I'm really pleased with that so pop all that to one side and I'm going to let it dry for the minute but that will end up going on top of here and form the background to our cards so, okay so next we want to make the actual crate or the little planter that all those vegetables are growing in so you want two pieces that are one by three and along the one inch side you want to score at half an inch okay and then just fold and burnish and these are going to be the little edges. Now for anybody that has done these before it's very very similar but we're not doing the back pieces here because they will stick directly onto this. You can't see but it's all encased inside there. Okay so it's really neat as well the way I've put this together. Okay so that's those two for the corners. So these are going to form our hinges to keep everything together. Then we want these four strips here which are one by two and seven eighths of an inch. So just under that three, okay? And these are the four pieces for the front here. And then for our sides, you want eight pieces that are again, half an inch, but this time by two and a half. And along that two and a half side, you wanna score it two, and you wanna do that eight times. And these are gonna be what connect from here to here, okay? And then these are the kind of strips for inside so that we've got somewhere to stick all of our little vegetables on. You don't have to obviously have vegetables, but these are half an inch again by four. And along the four inch side, you want to score at half an inch and three and a half. 
and you want to do three of them. You may want more, you may only want two. Again, when you see me put it together, you can decide. And then these two pieces are brown because I want it to look like it's mud within that kind of planter. So these are two and three eighths of an inch by two and three quarters of an inch and you want two pieces. Okay, and that's everything. And then obviously the bits that you're doing. I'm gonna stamp these pieces and do some embossing, heat embossing with you shortly. Okay, so first of all, you wanna grab your two hinges and your four plain strips here, okay? And then using some glue, I'm just gonna pop some on the front and I'm gonna pop the first one right at the very bottom. So you want it to be stuck see that right to the very bottom so it's flush because this will be the base of our card okay like so now if you want to use your grid which I've used in the part in the in other ones it's light down along a line any line and just make sure it's nice and straight okay the last thing you want is them all to start being a bit crooked and wonky and things like that because otherwise your card will rock okay so I've got a nice right angle there then the next one again you want to pop some glue but this time you're going to come from the top but not quite to the top I'm coming down about a quarter of an inch don't matter if you come down a bit further you can if you want go to the very top but I forgot to do this on the other one but it is I, it's a nice little I don't know it just gives a more of a crate look I think by having that little bit of an overhang again lie it down and just make sure that it's straight then with the other two again add a bit of glue and you're going to stick one so you've got about three eighths of an inch and then the other one just hover it there just to kind of see that you've got them even. If you want to actually measure these out because you're a bit unsure then by all means do so. But I've made so many of these now. I'm quite happy with that. And if it is a little bit off it doesn't matter with these ones in the middle but you want to make sure your bottom one is straight because like I said you don't want your card to rock. And then that last one I'm sticking in there. So all of them are stuck within that fold there, okay? So let's just make sure that one's stuck. Okay, like so. And then with the other end now, I'm just gonna add some glue, like so. And then I'm gonna stick that, make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom one. But you can just fold the whole thing over like a sandwich and just push them, make sure they run nice and straight with the score line in there and that's what you should have okay it will stand up with the hinge and if you do that then you can make sure it doesn't rock or anything okay so we've got like a little gate at the moment then with all of these pieces here actually before we do that if you get one of your brown pieces and it will stick in and cover the panels it doesn't matter if it doesn't cover the whole area it's not supposed to it's meant to just show the brown coming out from all of those panels so the easiest way to stick it down is actually is if you just run some glue around the three panels you don't need to go right to the top that will be enough and then I'm just going to stick that one in there Okay, now we can grab these pieces. Now you're sticking, you're leaving that you want the hinge on the outside, you're not sticking that piece, that's going to stick to the back of the card. You just want to stick this piece in and you're just going to line it up with these four here. So again, I'm going to start with the bottom one because you always want to make sure that that one runs nice and straight. So I'm going to pop that one in there. And if you stick it either side of the score line, okay, don't stick it over the score line because it will stop that kind of hinge working. Right. you can see there it's just to the right there of that score line and that's stuck to the left so that score line and that hinge fold nicely okay so that one's nice and straight and then I'm going to go up to the top here add some glue on that piece it's up to you whether you put glue on that or on there and then this one again I'm just lining up with this one here and if you get those in place first then everything else you can just you know, use the one that you've done before to, to line them up. So I'm just gonna add some more glue there. Okay, so you have all those hinges there on the next side and that should move quite freely. So now you can see, and this overhang is the top. Okay, so that's now my right side. Now I'm gonna do the left side. So you just wanna stick those last four exactly the same way as I've just done that one there. 
Okay, so now you should have this, okay, so you've got those all ready to be glued and then that will stick to the back. So you can see now how that's coming together. Now you want that larger three by six piece and then you'll have this piece which was your two and three quarter by five and three quarter. Mine is slightly shorter because it was a piece of scrap but you're not going to see any of the bottom. So you want to get that stuck down. Be careful if it's still a little bit wet, which some of this ink might be. You can roughly heat set it but I don't want to warp my card so I'm just going to tread carefully and it should all be okay. So focus on the top, make sure you get a nice even frame. I'm going to just bring that in so I don't run the risk of getting any fingerprints. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Then what's going to happen is, is that's going to stick onto the bottom here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the left hand side and you just want to add glue. If you can do one at a time if you want, but you have to try and then like tuck them in. So I'm just going to do all four. Okay, and then you basically want to line up the fold of each one to the edge of this with the bottom one running flush with the bottom of the card. So that's the one I'm going to focus on first. Push that one down and then the top one. Get that pushed in place. And then once they're there, you can kind of go underneath and just push the others and then line them up. That's why it's good to use the wet glue because it does give you that wiggle room. Okay, so you can see there, they're all stuck nice and flush with the bottom and flush with the side there. So when you bring it up, that's how it's going to look. And then this piece here, we will stick in in a minute to cover everything up. Okay, I skipped uh, along there and went and stuck it down, which is fine to do, but there's a much easier way to add these before you do so. So before we stick that down, just fold and burnish the ends of these. And then we're just going to add glue to one side and you want to stick it on this piece and you just want to run it so that's it, it it lines up with the outside here. See it's just that fold is running straight with that top piece. Just use it as a guide. Okay. You may want it closer to the front or further back because what will happen once that comes around can you see that's where our first kind of little piece is going to be. You can see there where it is where I've got the tomato and those two radishes stuck. So then the next one, more glue, and then the fold of that, you're going to run straight along the next one. And because these are half an inch, so the same width as this piece, if you do have anything overhanging, maybe cut it before you stick it down or trim it afterwards. Or if you want to, you can mitre the sides and just take little wedges off if you would prefer. And then that last one, you're going to line up and it should fit nicely into that part before that fold. I've got a feeling mine is going to just catch a little bit so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit off there and then stick that one in and then it will sit perfectly up to that score line otherwise it would just kind of buckle a little bit. Okay so that's those now all stuck. Now to ensure that we get them equally spaced if you pop some glue on all three of them oh, try not to uh, let them touch. You don't have to do all three by the way at the same time. You can do one by one. Lie them down flat and then fold the whole thing in half so you've got one you've got the front piece and the side piece and let that side piece run perfectly over the top. Okay and then when you bring it up they will be perfectly lined and then we can just finish it so now I can go back to this again. I literally stuck it there and then I was like no rushing ahead of myself so I'm just going to pop some glue just on all four of those and then again like I said fold those over make sure this one runs straight with the base and then fold that over and it will all line up perfectly and by doing it this way you will just ensure that everything lies flat and it's going to fit in your envelope and there you have your little kind of planter and you can fill this with flowers like I said you don't have to have fruit and veg in it but now this is ready for us to start doing all the fun decoration Okay, fortunately I just noticed my memory card had run out so it wasn't recording but I've just stuck those two there just to cover where these kind of joins were, okay? And then you just want to start working your way forward so because I'm not using any acetate it's really easy because you're just sticking these directly onto here. So I'm going to pop my carrots there, I've got the broccoli and so on. So I'm going to stick all of these down and then I will talk you through how to do a little bit of heat embossing and we'll do this one here and we'll stick that bunting down.
Okay, so that's what I've done so far. Also, I forgot to stick this piece in, but that's fine. You can do it still, even when this is as it is. So I'm just going to add some glue on the back there. And you just want to line it up with the bottom. It's easy to do because you're just going up from the, the bottom there. Just line it up so it's nice and straight. And it just tidies up, kind of hides the, the little kind of tabs there that you joined. Okay, so that's now all nice and neat. Okay, so yeah, hopefully you've got yours however you're doing it, like I said, with flowers and whatever. Then I'm going to attach my bunting. I like to add it to the string and then stick it on. Some people just stick them all separately. To be honest, I probably could with these because you can't actually see that there's string underneath there. So yeah, let's do it that way. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of that bit. But I have got the same string and just done two little bows. So I am going to, I've got my hot glue all nicely warmed up. People have been asking how I'm getting on with my glue gun. I love it. Really, really good. Like I said, I've got it in the holster just next to me there and it is very good. So I'm going to pop one in the middle. I'm going to not squeeze it right down so it is slightly raised because it does look quite nice like that. And then, and to colour these I just used the same kind of colours that were in this. So in this case I used the reds for the tomato. In that one I used the oranges for the carrots. So it's just another nice way just to keep all of your colours matching. Pop that on there. So I'm just going to stick these down. Okay, so that's the bunting and then I've just got these two here but I'm not going to use my hot glue just because they're so tiny so I'm going to use a little bit of my wet glue here because this dries really nicely and just attach it. Again, it's optional but I do think it looks quite nice onto each of the ends there. Okay, so I'm just going to, there you go, cute isn't it? So I'm just going to leave that lying down just so that the glue doesn't drop. Then I've got this here. So this was from, so I did say I would show you the other stamp set. So this was from a Papercraft Essentials magazine. I can't remember what issue, but I will share any links to it. And it was a recent one. But it goes really well. The reason I got it is because it goes really well with my first edition Secret Garden collection. So I'd already used the fork and the kind of spade there, shovel on the envelopes, but they got this nice little plaque here and you can put dad's, mum's and then shed or you can have craft shed and I used that for my she shed that I made. But I also used the love grow here as well on the envelope. So I stamped that, which I've got there. And then obviously if you do have tiny little stamps and you can stamp anything you want in here, but I just done a veg patch. So I'm just gonna do that again. There we go and then I will cut that out in a moment. I've also got a brad where I've cut off the, the actual split pin part of it and I'm just gonna stick that with some hot glue over the top, which you can see there, just gives you that nice little, looks like it's been nailed in. Okay, so pop that all to one side. So now we're gonna do a little bit of heat embossing. So within this stamp set here, you have this little stamp here, which is to create little kind of, um, planters like little plant name things what do you call them what is that called I can't even think what it's called um, sign <laughs> anyway I'm just going to ink it up and I'm going to do one two three four five so nice odd numbers so I'm just going to stamp those I'm using the memento because well the memento works best for alcohol markers I'm going to colour these in with black, but it won't really matter with black, so obviously, yeah, you won't see any smudges or anything anyway, so there's those there. Make sure you give yourself room so you can cut them out, and I've got a little white border there. And then, and then I'll just use this marker here, I'm just going to colour them all in. And these are so easy to draw, I mean I could have drawn them, but I just want that consistency of size. But you can also just cut them out of black cardstock, but I am going to be cutting a white frame around these, so, you know, yeah, it's entirely up to you how you do this. Then I'm going to grab my anti-static buddy, and this is just, basically will take off any greasy marks, and any stickiness that might be on there, any fingerprints, just makes embossing much, much easier. 
and then I'm going to start stamping different names here for my vegetables using Versamark. So I've got tomatoes, so I'm going to take that one off. These are dinky, very, very small. And I thought, I wonder if they're going to take well to the embossing powder if they're not too small and it might just clog up. But I've just got away with it. You can actually, you know, you can make them all out. So I thought, yeah, I'll do that. So you just then want to stamp in the middle. And because we're stamping on black, we will be able to see. So I can see there the shininess. And you don't need to worry about doing this quickly because it doesn't dry. It will stay tacky. Oh, I was about to do tomatoes again then. We don't want that. So that's tomatoes done. Then I'm going to work my, my way through now. So I've got broccoli, radishes, carrots, cabbage and so on. So I'm just going to stamp them all out on these five here. Okay, so then I've got some of the Wow Opaque Bright White. This is super fine embossing powder. I love this one. And I'm just going to sprinkle it over. And because we added that anti-static pad, it will just fall off of everything else apart from where we'd stamped. You can see there? So it's stamped them all out and you can just go back over. I tend to like go over it twice. You'll see there that the black is completely clear of any embossing powder. And if you do have any little bits, just get a, a very fine brush and you can just brush away any others. Okay, pop all this away. Now I've got my heat gun, I'm just going to heat set these. Okay, so I've done all of them and while that was kind of just cooling, I went and cut that and I also cut the triangle out the inside, which I hate doing, but it looks so much better when you remove it. So then I've just got some craft card, the same as what I used here, and I just want to make little kind of wooden effect pieces on those little signs. So I've got one on the tomatoes and one on the carrots and all I've done, Again, I don't have, all my dies are more decorative to enhance my, I guess, paper craft. I don't own like a box die. I don't own like dies to make gift bags. I like to do everything from scratch. And that's why I love doing all these kind of little things. So I'm just cutting two little strips there, okay? And then it's about, just give you the measurement here. So two and a quarter. Um, and it's probably about not even a quarter of an inch thick so it's just over like one eighth. Run some glue and then fold it in half okay it's a bit messy a bit too much glue there but anyway just get that stuck don't worry if all the glue oozes out and you can distress all this as well because obviously it's a muddy kind of planter it would look good distressed but I've decided for this one I'm going to just keep it plain or just you know the normal card colour but now I've got this little kind of piece here, which will be one and about one and one eighth of an inch. Yeah, just over. And now I can get my tomatoes. So I'm going to pop a little bit of glue, not right at the top, a little way down, because it's nice to have a little bit of it just poking up the top. Again, I just thought it looked a bit more authentic. But now, look how cute that is. And this would be great to have around your she shed. So I'll link the she shed up here because things like this are really cool to have like coming out of the grass and stuff. And then like you could just, I don't know, get some red pom-poms or something to look like tomatoes. But now you can see where I've done that one and then I stick it just behind that tomato. So I'm gonna pop some glue on the front there and just stick that one right there. Okay. And then I've got the radishes, which is stuck on the front. So that one is gonna be like that. Okay. And then the veg patch one, that can go in place now. That's just gonna kind of hang off there. And I'll stick the brad in a minute. I've got broccoli down the bottom. And it's all these finishing touches, which kind of add to it. I'm trying. And then I need to do this one here for my carrots. So I've got my carrots just at the back there, and then I've got the cabbage, which is on the very, very back. I worked in odd numbers, so I've got five there. It just looks, again, a bit more pleasing to the eye. But how cute is this? Oh, I just want to, like, sit in that kind of vegetable patch. You know what would also look really cool is having, like, little Peter Rabbit 
pop out the top or something or just a rabbit in general I might actually see if I've got any little in fact I have got some rabbit dies you'll see if I've done that in the video in the photos at the end but how cute would just or even some ears just a couple of bunny ears it turns into more of an Easter card there but you can see how my mind just ends up going and it just develops into more things so then I'm going to pop a little bit of hot glue just there the tiniest bead and that's what I like about this glue gun is you don't get that long it cuts the glue really well it doesn't just give you all those kind of glue strings and then just sit that on there and there you have it you've got plenty of room to write on the back if you do want to add some mats and layers like I did here you just want the same for the front there so this green piece was two and three quarters by five and three quarters and then the white piece is two and a half by five and a half and just stamp your message I'll do that off camera or you can just write it directly onto that but if you do keep it like that then I would say stamp the back of this before you stick it all together now that folds nice and flat either way it's entirely up to you but it will fit perfectly into my six by six envelope there and like I said you don't have to decorate it like that but I do think it kind of finishes off everything perfectly so there you have it so I hope you've enjoyed this card tutorial this pop-up box or alternative kind of pop-up box but like I said it's got just kind of going into more detail with the colouring aspect of things and stamping. Every single card for this series is going to have stamped images on it and that's what I really wanted to focus on because I've got so many lovely ones that I want to use. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed it today. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye!